What people don't understand is, um, oh. they gotta take baths every now and then. Doesn't matter <laughs> with what. Hey there, dear popaholics and skincare enthusiasts, my name is Arya Bramovich, also known as Mr. Blackhead. I'm a certified medical esthetician and I'm very happy to see all of your smiling faces back on my channel. And for those of you who are the first time here, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this video at least the way I enjoyed making it. So today we're going to explore together five things you should definitely stop doing to your skin starting from now. Let's begin. Number one, stop changing your skincare products too often. As I like to say regarding any aspect of our lives, and especially skincare, there are no magic pills. There is no single skincare product on the market, whether it's over the counter or with a prescription, that can really do a significant change to your skin in just a couple of days. Yes, we all want to take this magic pill and to wake up in the morning more productive, healthier, smarter, and prettier, but in reality, <laughs> Things just don't happen overnight. The same with skincare. Even the best products out there won't do a noticeable change to your skin within a less than a month or two. But but what about all the products out there? I I just have to try all of them till I find the best one for me. Oh my dear, you are experiencing what's called the paradox of choice. While you have made your choice for this one product that a moment ago you were sure that is the best thing that happened to your skin, here comes another one, and another one, and another one. Which one to choose? Then here is a news flash for you. By the end you finish watching this video, another company launches another product to the market. But no worries, no need to be in panic, because as an esthetician, I can tell you that all you need is not more than a couple of products that are making your skin look natural and healthy. That's it. Take also into consideration that if you change a product too often, then when things go well or go horribly wrong, like acne breakouts or severe skin irritation, you won't be able to point out which of the products is responsible for it. Is it the one you're using today or the one that you have used a week ago or maybe a combination of the two? My recommendation would be to try a product for at least two months and after that make your conclusions. Did it work? Does your skin look better? Do you have breakouts? If it did work and you are satisfied with the results, then no need to change no matter how fancy those other products on the shelf might be. Didn't work as you wanted? No worries, you gave it a fair shot, now you can change to a better product for you. Number two, stop exposing your skin too much to the sun and if you already do this, then at least wear sunscreen. Now, don't get me wrong, <laughs> we are not vampires, being exposed to the sun is very important for both our physical and mental health. It helps us to produce more serotonin, which is the happiness hormone, it decreases the risk for depression, it helps us to produce vitamin D that is super important for our immune system and for keeping our bones strong and many more positive things, but like everything else in our life, it's all about balance and if we don't keep this delicate balance, it can have a very negative effect on both our health and appearance. First of all, the UV radiation from the sun is strongly linked to three types of skin cancer, which is already a good enough reason for us to keep this balance. But if you're one of those who only care about the looks, so when it comes to our appearance, it can significantly boost the aging of our skin and cause sun damage such as wrinkles, leathery skin, age spots, solar keratosis, and solar elastosis. And if you don't believe me, here is a photo from the New England Journal of Medicine of the truck driver who for 28 years had his left side of the face exposed to the UV radiation from the left window of his truck while his right side was more protected in the shadows. And if I will put a mirror to each of the sides, then here is how he could have looked if he had both of the sides exposed at the same level as his left side. And here is how he could have looked if he had been applying sunscreen or keeping his face protected from the UV radiation like on the right side of his face. So Ari, what should I do? Should I go outside like this? Yes, uh, this, <laughs> uh, this is one option, but a better option would be to understand that you should protect yourself and one of the best ways is just to apply sunscreen with at least 30 SPF or even a moisturizer that is combined with the sunscreen. 
By the way, a side note, my fellow darker skinned friends, you're lucky. You're naturally more protected from the sun because of the amount of melanin that you have in your skin. It's basically the pigment that gives your skin its color, but also provides protection from some forms of sun damage. However, it doesn't make you 100% UV protected. So you still need to be aware of it and protect yourself. And to sum it up, if your skin is light like the background behind me and you work all day outside in the sun, and you've got skin cancer history in your family, then, my dear, you should start each day with a sunscreen bath. <laughs> now, I'm kidding, I just really wanted to find a reason to show you this footage, but yeah, you should be more aware about protecting your skin. And don't forget that in the winter, there is also UV radiation, sometimes even stronger than in the summer, so stay protected during this time of the year as well. Number three, stop dehydrating your body. Or in other words, you should drink enough water and not to get into a situation where you're dehydrated. And I will ignore completely all the bad things that not drinking enough water can do to your health. And there are plenty of those. And I will stick only to what it can do to your skin. Considering the fact that a very big part of your skin is actually water, then it can do a lot. So if you don't drink enough water on a regular basis, you will notice your skin is drier, kind of flaky and itchy. And also you will notice that your skin loses its elasticity, which in the long term can cause wrinkles and aging of the skin. And in some cases where the dehydration is chronic, it can cause skin cracking, which not only painful, but also can cause infections. And if all of that wasn't convincing enough to you, then not drinking enough water can make your skin more susceptible to skin problems and disorders such as psoriasis, eczema, and discoloration. Number four, stop eating garbage. I don't know if you heard this before, but our skin is an organ. Yes, it's considered to be an organ like any other organ in our body. However, it is also the largest organ and the one that protects us from many pathogens which are out there in the world that can harm our body, create sickness or infections. Obviously, like most of our organs, the skin is very crucial for our survival and we should really be conscious about how we treat it. Now, like the other organs, when we eat garbage, this kind of garbage is provided eventually as a source of energy to our organs. And unlike many other organs in our body, we can see pretty quickly the results of our nutrition on our skin. Because unlike the liver, kidneys or even the intestines, it is right in front of our eyes. You don't need to go and do an ultrasound or a CT scan to see if it looks all right or not. So if you're suffering from acne, especially if you're past the puberty age, or you're suffering from eczema or any other skin condition, there is quite a good chance that your diet has some kind of, let's say, relation to it. And maybe your skin is screaming out for help, asking you to stop feeding it with garbage. I'm not saying that every case of skin disorder is necessarily 100% food related, but I do say that many times changing something in our diet can make a serious improvement and in some cases even eliminate the problem. Now, of course, we should examine each case separately, but there are still a couple of things that apply pretty much to everyone. And before we continue to my recommendations, I will have to make a quick disclaimer. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nutritionist. I am a certified medical esthetician. My recommendations are based on many scientific researches, my own experience, and many of my patients' experiences. And I know how much food is sentimental, that it has a big and emotional part in our lives. I even heard one time a cardiologist who talked about this issue exactly, and he said that people come to him with heart problems, and of course he provides them the needed treatment or medications tells them that they have to be a bit more physically active or reduce the stress level and so on. But when it comes to changing their diet, most of them don't want even to listen. So the following things I'm going to say about diet and food, I challenge you instead of judging it, be curious about it. Explore the ideas and don't take everything for granted, even regarding what I'm going to say. Okay, so First, do yourself a favor and cut down as much as possible simple carbs. The more simple the carb that you're consuming, the more chances it causes inflammation in your body. And that includes your skin as well. For example, instead of white rice, try to change it sometimes to brown rice. Instead of white bread, try to change it to rye bread or spelt bread. Instead of eating snack full of processed sugar, try to change it to fruits. And 
By the way, fruit juice doesn't count as a fruit. It's almost as bad as a snack full of processed sugar because it lacks the fiber, which slows down the processing of sugar in our body. Another thing that causes both serious inflammation and has a lot of unnecessary hormones is dairy products. Milk is for babies and cow's milk is for cow's babies. Are you a baby? Are you a cow baby? <laughs> yes, I thought so. Then try to cut down on dairy products. If you don't believe me and you have acne, try it for three weeks at least. Take a picture of your face before and after and write me in the comments below how did it impact on your skin. And for the last thing that I recommend in terms of our diet is cutting down the meat consumption. Very similar to dairy, meat is both very inflammatory to our body and has hormones that we should not consume. Whoa, <laughs> what, what, what should I eat then? Are you promoting a plant-based diet? Are you vegan? The answer is yes, I am vegan for more than a year and it made an amazing impact on my health. And before you meet and dairy lovers, skip to another video, I want to say that I feel you. I really like the taste of meat and dairy and for the vast majority of my life, I was a pretty heavy meat consumer. And as some of you probably feel right now, I hated when my vegan friends or random vegan people online try to tell me what a terrible person I am for consuming animal products. But I'm not there. I'm not going to judge you. And as we agreed in the beginning, I hope you're not going to judge me and instead approach this topic with simple curiosity. We're living in amazing times where a vegan diet is not only lettuce, kale, or broccoli, but actually not very different in flavor or in variety from what I ate when I was an enthusiast meat or dairy consumer. Most of the time I try to eat healthy vegan food, but once in a while, like everyone else, I do eat unhealthy vegan food like this, 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 or even this. I want to get into all of the details in this video because I want to cover a couple of more things, so I will probably do a dedicated video for plant-based diet in regards to skincare in the future. But in the meantime, feel free to search more about it even here on YouTube or to challenge yourself with cutting down some animal products that you consume and see how it impacts your skin. And as I said before, I would love to read your feedback about it in the comment section below. Number five, stop using regular soap on your face or even a dish soap. Yes, yes, you heard me right. I said a dish soap. I wash my makeup off with dish soap. Yeah, hmm, yes, uh, but uh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dish soap is really bad for your skin, especially your face. I will get to it, but first let's talk about something less terrible like regular liquid soap or bar soap and why you should avoid applying them onto your face and i will try to do that without putting you through very complicated scientific explanations and to keep it as simple as possible basically your skin all the time produces oils from the oil glands and those oils have a couple of very crucial features they prevent our skin from drying out which is super important dry skin tends to crack much easier which creates kind of a hole in our protecting wall of the body that makes it easier for pathogens to enter and damage our body another feature of this oil is that it has some acids that protect our skin from different kinds of bacteria and those acids make our skin slightly acidic roughly around 5 pH now when we apply bar soap or liquid hand soap which is more basic around 8 to 10 pH, we kind of strip out almost completely our skin from its super essential protective layer. Now, not only that we have left our skin naked without any acids to protect it from harmful bacteria and we dried it, but also our skin has, we can say, kind of sensors that detect this lack of oils. And instead of producing the usual amount of oil, it starts to produce much more than that, which eventually can clog our pores. So if your skin is more prone to develop comedones, AKA blackheads or acne, then by washing your face with bar soap or with liquid hand soap, 
you're making it much worse. And now that you understand this, we can talk about the dish soap. <laughs> uh, yes, I know that most of you have never used a dish soap onto your face, but apparently there are people who do and they're walking among us like any other person. But anyway, you know these TV commercials where they advertise a dish soap and they want to show you how quickly and easily the soap cleans even the most oily dishes? then the more effective your dish soap in cleaning oils like the one that we see in the commercials, the more it strips your essential oils from your skin. Not to mention other chemicals that might be there which we have zero knowledge of how they can affect our skin because the chemists that have developed the soap didn't have in their mind the welfare of our face. Now, I know there will be some people who watch this video and say Hey Ari, I've used my urine as a face wash for 30 years and it looks great Then Mazel Tov! You won the jeans lottery and it means your skin is so great that it manages to cope even with the terrible things you're putting it through And to give you an example, I have a friend who eats all day everyday junk food, doesn't put any sunscreen even in the summer when we're at the beach, uses the same bar soap for both his butt and his face, and I would be surprised if he drinks enough water during the day. And yet his skin is so smooth and soft like a baby's butt. <laughs> the fact that you're using regular soap for your face, changing your skincare products every week, not using any sunscreen, or eating literally <laughs> pure garbage, and your skin still looks good doesn't mean that it will stay like this forever. It can last for 10 years, 20 years, and even 30 years. But it's possible that one day your skin won't be able to bear those things anymore. So be aware of it and start taking care of it even today when it's still perfect. And on the other side, if you're struggling with your skin, try to apply the things I've talked about today and I can ensure you that you will see an improvement. Hope you like the topic for today and if so, it would be great if you subscribe and hit the like button. And that's it. See you next time, Mr. Blackhead.